Hey, welcome back to the channel, Data Factory fans. In this video, I'm going to walk you through working with Avro data. I'm going to take an Avro file that came from Event Hubs. It's a sample file with a wind turbine data in it. And we're going to transform that data. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to show you how to work with Avro within Mapping Data Flows in Data Factory. And inside of Data Factory, Mapping Data Flows is the, is the place you're going to go to process Avro data. It works with the complex data types inside of Avro uh, very well. So we're going to work with uh, some different structures and we'll do some flattening of arrays and we'll do some parsing and then I'm going to aggregate that data and show you how to do all that. I'm hopeful this will be instructional for you, not just if you're working with Avro from Event Hubs or any other source or just any data that has hierarchies in it. I think you'll find this, this helpful. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So if you look at my screen, I have a blank canvas. I'm starting from scratch on this one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a source. So this is going to be Avro data, like I said. So I'm going to uh, stick with an inline. Uh, data set type in this case. I'm not going to use any of my pre-built data sets. Let me just close this up to get this out of the way. This is just distracting. And I'm going to say Avro is going to be my inline type. Now when you have an inline data set type, you're not using a shared data set artifact from the rest of your factory. You're just creating something that's going to be inline directly in this data flow. So the link service type is blob store. In my case, I stored my Avro file in my blob containers. You could use uh, data lake store as well, or other you know uh, sort of source types. We also have SFTP now for um, mapping data flows. All right, so that's my link service. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to source options. I'm going to go and find the file that I have, and it's the sample file here under my container and sample data, and it is this Avro file right here. That's all I need to do. So now let's go ahead and do a data preview. Let's take a look at that data. And um, like I said, this should be wind turbine energy sample data. Uh, used for an Event Hub example. And so you'll commonly see Avro in these cases coming from Event Hub. All right, there we go. So this is the data that we want. Now, the interesting data in here, there's, you know, there are sequence numbers and offsets, and these are information about the events themselves, system properties. The body contains the really interesting information and all the information about the wind turbines. But you see that it came in as, as a sort of binary field. In fact, it's listed as binary here as a data type. It's actually a data type inference problem that we need to tell data factory that no, this is actually a string. Two ways to do that, completely your preference. I'm going to first show you the way to do that as another transformation. So I'm going to add a drive column. Now, if you were to go to try to find that body column, there's not going to be any column metadata here at all. If I go over into inspect, there's nothing here. And the reason for that is because an inline data set does not have any scheme associated with it. The projection is empty because we didn't import the projection. So what you want to do here is go ahead and import that schema. And then this is going to go out to the Spark cluster. I have my data flow debug session turned on for my integration runtime. And there you see that it's picking up binary. So, so to correct that, here's some things you can do. In the drive column, let's call this drive column as um, fixed data type. And let's go ahead and now we can pick that body um, column. And then we can just two string that. When you do that, you will now see that data factor is going to interpret that as a string instead of binary. It's going to be a structure inside of that that's column. And so there it is. So we have all of the information in there. So we have a wind speed, turbine speed. I'm going to pick wind speed to work with to do the aggregation. That's the thing I want to pull out of here. Before I do, I want to show you the other technique you can use to correct that inference. So instead of using a, a drive column, another way to do that is to go into the transformation itself. And up here on the right is the script button. And you can see the script behind it. It's actually the code behind your graph. And you see that here is where um, Data Factory chose binary as a data type for uh, body. So you can just change it right here. We can make this a string. So this is a little bit different. You're not you know, using the UI, the graph, to uh, do that kind of work instead, or the two string here. You're just changing it to string manually directly in the transformation in the script. And that's fine too. So let's go ahead and let's validate that that's correct. Now, if I did a preview right on the source, we should see that same String data, and that string data is encoded data, right? It has the structure inside of it. So we want to pull that out. When you want to grab a hierarchy out of a text field, what you do in Data Factory is you use the parse transformation. So you add the parse transformation next. The column is going to be what you want to result from that string to hierarchy transformation. So I will call this, essentially, I'll call this body structure because the expression is simply going to be the name of the column that we're converting. And that is body, right? Body has the entire structure embedded inside of it. It's it's um, it's encoded inside of that field. Now the output column type has to be the description of that 
entire structure. So you put the structure definition here. Now, the easiest way to do this is just click on detect data, data type here and allow the inference engine from Data Factory to produce that for you. And so there you go. So there you see all the different elements of the structure that I'm now going to have as a hierarchy in a new column inside of my data. And there is wind speed that we want to get at next. But let's just kind of stay right here for now. Let's go ahead and do a data preview. Now what we should see is an additional column called body structure that has the full hierarchy there inside of it. You'll see it. And there's our wind speed. Now one thing I want you to notice is that this is an array. Uh, it's an array of, of structures. And if you look at the column type, the data type, it has the array indicator here. So we know it's an array. So what we have to do next is we can't work with that until we've unrolled that because it's inside of an, an array. I shouldn't say we you can't work with it. You could, but I want to just aggregate the values across every value that's found. So I want to flatten that next. I want to take that array and unroll it so it has a separate row, a uh, single row for each. I essentially want to denormalize that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's choose the unroll by, which is going to be body structure. Reset your input columns because now it's going to read, data factor will read the structure and the array and it'll give you what the output's going to look like, which is uh, just the the common names without the fully qualified anymore because we have unrolled that. If I refresh this now, I should now see a column in every row with exactly what I'm looking for, including that wind speed, which is what I want to work with for this example. And so there's wind speed. Great. So we've taken it from Avro. We have pulled out the hierarchy out of a string field. We have flattened that array out, and now we can aggregate. So aggregation is the same here as if you were working with any other relational data within Data Factory. I don't want to group by anything here. I just want to have an aggregate. Let's do the uh, min, max, and average. All right. So we'll say min, wind speed. And the expression is really simple. It's going to be min. And I don't remember the name of the column. So I'm going to go into expression builder so I can get my column name. There you go. It's wind speed. That's not where I want it. I want to go right there. All right. It's very good. And now I can just take this and I can clone this. And I'll do it one more time. And I'm going to go in here and I'll just edit directly inside of the boxes now. I'll say min, max, and average. And then that's the same as the names of the aggregate functions. Oops, I goofed up. Max and average. All right, let's go ahead and have a data preview on this now. We should see the aggregated values across all the data that's coming in on this Avro file. Okay, so the minimum wind speed was that was recorded was zero. The max is 360, and the average is 177.1. Okay, so I think that pretty much does it. Uh, that's how you'd work with hierarchies within Avro files and complex data types. Make sure that you change that binary data to string so that you can get at all that richness that's stored within that column, that body column when you're working with uh, Avro from Event Hubs. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks. See you next time.